Local generative AI video for quite some time was seen as an unobtainable pinnacle of local generative AI. And about a year ago, Stability AI was the first to show that this wasn't actually the case, that yes, you could generate maybe really short videos and you need a really powerful GPU to do it, but it was in fact possible, especially once you applied some image stabilization. And shortly thereafter, yes, in theory, you could make generative AI video on your personal GPU, but it looked like really early research projects from Meta. So the video was okay, but it was jittery and it just wasn't that lifelike. Shortly thereafter, there were tools like Pika and the number of other closed source tools outside of OpenAI that showed us incredible capabilities with lifelike or near photorealistic generative AI video specifically going from text prompts to video. And today there's an incredible project that has come out of China that I think has changed everything. And the last few weeks have been particularly interesting in terms of advancements in AI video. We saw some advancements on the open source side, some from Meta. And I wanna talk about today why this project is different. This new project is called Pyramid Flow Stable Diffusion 3, and it's a 2 billion parameter diffusion transformer model that can generate 10 second videos at 768p with 24 FPS, which is really impressive. And I think the best way to describe this is it's basically an open source local version of Pika. The reason Pika is interesting is Pika was one of the first really accessible tools that granted was closed source and definitely was from China that gave us near photorealistic renderings at high frame rates. Initially, one of the big drawbacks of a lot of AI video tools was they were very short and they could only operate at very low frame rates. And Pika's ability to basically generate more than five seconds at more than around 13 to 15 frames per second was a really big deal. Now, obviously Runway ML is probably still the gold standard for AI generative video. But the thing is, is it's a pretty expensive API and obviously it's still closed source. So I wanna get into more about this model. Welcome to AI Flux, let's get into it. So again, this model is called Pyramid Flow Stable Diffusion 3. And it's kind of a research project that's come out of China that happens to be very well productized. And it's not surprising to me that this is built on top of Stable Diffusion 3. If I had to guess, I would think that this is probably something pretty similar to what Black Forest Labs will be releasing soon, but obviously they haven't really given us a timeline outside of updates on their Flux models. And I also would have to think that this is probably what the Stable Diffusion team wanted to release before they ran out of money and before Stability AI was basically sold for parts and their primary developers went elsewhere, predominantly to Black Forest Labs. So I'm still excited to see what they release. So what is this model? So again, it's a 2 billion diffusion transformer model that most importantly can generate 10 second long videos at 768p with a 24 FPS frame rate. Now we're not sure what GPUs they were using. They might mention this in their paper, which is linked below in the description, but it looks absolutely incredible. Um, specifically the particle awareness reminds me of OpenAI's uh, generative video and the realism and uh, specifically the ability for it to understand what the subject is, what the point of view is, and then kind of just subjects interacting with the scene is incredible. Now, why is it called Pyramid Flow? The reason it's called Pyramid Flow is because it uses a computational technique called flow matching for efficient training. And in another video this week, I want to get into some really cool tools that have emerged that actually let you fine tune up to 5 billion parameter text to video models locally on a single GPU. And what's really cool about flow matching is this means the model can support both text to video and image to video across two different variants. So there is a 384p five second variant, which is sort of the fast version. And there's the full version, which generates 10 second videos at 768p. We'll get into a number of examples on their project page, but it's pretty cool. This two-step implementation process is pretty impressive. And what's awesome on top of all of this is it's been released with the MIT license. So ideally, once they actually do release the training code, which they trained on top of open source data sets, which is another big, big deal, anyone should be able to really manipulate this. And with the tooling improvements that have come from outside this project, things are about to get really, really interesting. So let's hop into the project page themselves. So they show a number of other demos here, really showcasing the capabilities of this model, whether you're generating videos of cars on a highway or cooking meat on a grill. And I'll link this below so you guys can read into this. 
So first off, what's interesting, just talking about GPUs, is it did take around 20.7, so called 21,000 A100 GPU hours to train this. So still well outside of the reach of, I think, most people who are watching my videos. When they say 768p, they basically just mean 720p. So not quite uh, 1920 by 1080, but 1280 by 768 pixels at 24 FPS for 10 seconds. And these, Videos are really pretty interesting. So this one is beautiful, snowy Tokyo city is bustling, the camera moves through the bustling city street, following several people, so kind of a secondary subject, enjoying the beautiful snowy weather and shopping at nearby stalls. So quite good, a lot of different subjects. And of course, there is a little bit of ghosting here, but this is likely just the model trying to be efficient. These uh, driving simulations are also quite good. This one is at dusk, a car is driving on the highway with rear view mirror reflecting a colorful sunset and serene scenery. One thing that I have found really interesting with uh, these Chinese video models is that the prompts and the way the model actually, or the tokenizer responds to prompts, it responds to prompts in a way with English that has been written by people who predominantly speak Chinese. If you've been in China or you've learned a little bit of Mandarin, you'll understand that the way the emphasis of certain things are worded is different than what a native English speaker would use. So sometimes native English speakers can have slightly different experiences prompting these models, but I don't think that's gonna be a serious problem. So here uh, is a, a really incredible uh, particle shot with a lot of bokeh. For quite some time, models had no clue how to do this. Um, obviously, this is a common sort of trick that Midjourney uses to simplify images, where if it blurs out around what it thinks the primary subject is, it can simplify a lot of the compute going on. And this is a, a side shot of a woman with fireworks exploding in the distance beyond her, so quite interesting. We have another one with food here. Now, obviously these models do really well when a lot of the image is actually static, which is why a prompt like this is probably the most computationally impressive and strenuous for this model, but an image like this, you're just kind of getting flames. The particle effects and smoke effects are obviously the most complex, but the grill and all of these items here are basically static. And this is an extreme close-up of a green pepper kebab grilling on a barbecue with flames. And what's cool here is you can dictate shallow focus and light smoke. So to me with these models always, the most impressive thing is understanding depth of field, so like shallow focus, and understanding what's being blurred and what is the subject. Now they also recreated a few of the scenes that were actually featured in OpenAI's video model. So they have the same one here, so a video trailer featuring adventures of a spaceman wearing a red wool knitted motorcycle hat. Obviously the fidelity is still a bit lower, but the results are pretty impressive. And one thing that's also curious about this model is it appears when you reduce the color space, it also in a lot of ways improves its capability. Of course, this boat still looks pretty distorted, but the fact that it's able to do water realistically and maintain a pretty significant change in depth of field with a static structure is pretty cool. And then there are more kebabs. This cat is kind of concerning. You know, it, it looks realistic, but there's clearly still things that maybe aren't in necess necessarily the right spot. I think they definitely trained a lot of this model on drone shots or uh, architectural or uh, how, do I, how do I say this? Um, or sort of landscape shots, just because there's a clear trajectory, there's a clear space being uh, explored. And in a lot of ways, this is probably just where most of the training data was from, which is why you have a lot of these coastal shots with water. Uh, the water behavior is really impressive to me. This one here is churning ocean waves at night with a lighthouse on the coast create an intense and somewhat foreboding atmosphere. There are also um, like this one of an asteroid impact. There's some flooding going on here. Now, obviously here, it's a little confused because there are actually people sitting in a cafe. And I think if there was a flood event that probably wouldn't have been happening. Something tells me fire was also another big part of their training data set because it's exceptionally good at this. The underwater stuff, in my opinion, is always very prevalent in these models because there's a lot of open source footage from like nature documentaries that's technically um, public domain. Now, obviously in China, they don't really care about public domain, but I don't think they necessarily downloaded all of YouTube to do this if they're being honest about what their data sets were. Now, another big test of these models is when you're applying different kinds of artistic styles to them or uh, just kinds of video. So like this is kind of like a car ad. Here you have basically ripping off the theme of like a Cartoon Network show. I really think most of their training data came from just drone shots of mountainous regions because again, this is nearly perfect if you just told me that it was a up sampled video or something. And it's also cool because the model is 
clearly pretty adaptive if you could feed it art and then have, or say in the style of, and then get something like this. And what's really cool is they actually give quantitative results that are quite interesting. And most importantly, they include Pika, Cog Video X2B, and Kling which in my opinion are some of the best non-open AI models that we've seen in some time. Sora is obviously quite impressive. There are areas of quality score where I wonder how they're actually um, dictating or defining this, but it's quite interesting. So obviously generally Gen 3 Alpha, I would agree is still the best AI video model. In terms of Pika, you know, Pika is scoring basically as well as most of these models. Still when looking at these benchmarks, I think the closest point of comparison for this model generally is Pika 1.0. I think the most accurate way to describe this model is if you took Pika 1.0 and improved its training quite a bit and added some of the temporal abilities and understanding that Sora has, which I think is likely the most accurate. User preference is also quite interesting. This is basically just users looking at it and picking the one that they think is the most realistic. I think this is a bad heuristic necessarily to um, optimize for. When you optimize for this, you end up with something like mid-journey where yes, you get great results, but the creativity of the model and the ability to which you can actually manipulate what it's producing reduces substantially when you're just kind of wanting something that looks good to the human eye, but maybe isn't what is closest to the prompt or what the user really has been dictating with a prompt or an image input. So this is kind of a high level overview of their model. The paper really gives some other interesting insights, but we're already quite a few minutes into this video. So I'm curious, what is your go-to AI generative video tool? Do you like open source models? Do you like maybe generating an image with a local model and then feeding that into something like Runway ML Gen 2 or Gen 3? Uh, let me know in the comments below. So I think this is a pretty cool tool. It's interesting to see more really impressive stuff coming out of China, even using relatively old GPUs without really too much of an investment. The open source data sets I think are also quite interesting, especially since it's China and they don't really have to follow a lot of the rules that we have here in the US. So as always, I hope you learned something from this video. If you like our content, please like, subscribe and share and check out our vast link in the description below. And otherwise, we'll see you in the next one.